Hello everyone. Today is our final video in a five-part series where we are making the quilt called Daisy Days. Now last week we worked on constructing all of the units and putting together our quilt top. So this is where we are as we begin today's video. Now today I'm going to walk you through all the materials that you'll need to make the throw size version of this quilt. And throughout this series I've shared how to make your own templates and all the fabric requirements and piece size to make this throw size quilt with me. If you're interested in the three other quilt sizes and actually getting my templates, they're all included in the pattern along with the SVGs and you can find the pattern in the description box below. If this is your very first time joining the series, make sure to also check out the playlist for this series and that link is in the description box as well. It'll bring you over and I have all the videos in one place and you can just binge watch on your weekend or your time off and watch from video one up until where we are today. So I'm going to bring you along. We're going to move over. I'm going to show you everything you need to finish your quilt and I'm going to do some quilting with you today and we're going to bind this quilt today. So I think it's going to be bittersweet only because uh, I really enjoy this time with you, but I absolutely love this quilt and I cannot wait to have it all finished up so we can use it, right? And so I think that's uh, really the joy of finishing up a project as much as we love working on them, we finally get to use them or display them or give them away. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started with finishing up our Daisy Day quilt. Let's take a look at all the things that I have here on my table. These are the things that we're going to need to finish up our quilt for this series. We'll take a look at the measurements here in just a second. So I've made a custom quilt label for the back of my quilt. I think that is so cute. If you'd like to see how I made this quick and fun, custom one-of-a-kind quilt label. I'm going to put a link to the video in the description box below. We'll sew this on at the very end. This is the fabric that I'm going to use as my binding. This is the same exact fabric that I used in the center of my daisy appliques. So I thought that would really finish off this quilt really nice and pretty. This is my backing fabric, which I think was perfect for this quilt. It was almost like this was made specifically for my quilt. And uh, I think that will be so soft and very pretty. Of course, I have my quilt top and I have my batting. So let's go over all of the measurements for the things that we need. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let's see. Now keep in mind... The things, the measurements I'm going to give you today are to make the throw size, which roughly measures 51 inches wide and 63 inches long. If you're making any of the other three size quilts that come with this pattern, make sure to check the pattern because your uh, fabric requirements are going to be a little bit different than what I'm showing in today's video. Now for your binding fabric, you're going to need half a yard. And I personally like to cut my binding at two and a half inch wide strips. Uh, of course, we're all different, so you might be cutting your binding at a different width, but based on two and a half inch wide strips, you will need half a yard and you'll need six strips to make your binding. For the backing fabric, this fabric right here, you're going to need four yards for the throw size. Now keep in mind, we're going to cut that four yards in half and piece that together to make our quilt bag. There's going to be quite a bit of fabric left over. So uh, make sure you pick out something really pretty because we'll have fabric going into our fabric stash at the end of this quilt. And then for our batting, uh, I went with a packaged batting. I bought this at Joann's. It's the Fairfield uh, Quilters 8020. I really like this batting, uh, not just for my quilts, but for my smaller projects as well. And uh, I got the batting that's 72 by 90. Of course, that's going to also give me lots of extra 
to save for some mug rugs or stockings uh, that I want to make this year. So uh, we will have plenty of this left over as well. And those are the things, of course, you'll need some thread. <laughs> and if, uh, if you are basting your quilt, you'll need pins or spray basting. Uh, some of you like to purchase the batting that you can iron and fuse in place and baste your quilt that way. So of course, you'll need all the notions that it requires to finish off your quilt but these are the materials that it will take to get our quilt finished. So let's go ahead and start with the backing. Like I mentioned before, we're going to cut our four yards directly in half and piece this together and press that seam open and nice and flat. We are going to start with our four yards of backing fabric going to find both raw cut edges and just hold those together and find the exact middle of the four yards. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and just cut these two yards apart. We're going to match up the salvage edges and make sure that our pretty two sides are facing one another. Next, we're going to move over to the sewing machine. I'm going to line up my salvage edges and starting at the very top, I'm going to start sewing my two pieces together to form my quilt back. At the very beginning and at the very end, I do like to take several stitches and then do several back stitches and that's going to really lock the beginning and the ending of our seam. Now I've moved over about a quarter of an inch away from the salvage edge of my fabric and I'm going to sew a seam all the way from the top to the bottom. Making sure to keep everything nice and straight. Make sure everything is nice and flat all the way as you piece together these two pieces of fabric. As we come back down to the bottom, remember to do some back stitching to lock everything in place. And now we will remove the salvage edge and the extra bulk beyond our seam. Now that we've pieced together our two pieces, I like to bring in a ruler and I'm going to line up my ruler a quarter of an inch beyond the seam that we just sewn and I'm going to trim away everything that hangs over the edge. Make sure you do not cut into your piecing <laughs> seam and this will get rid of our salvage edge and any extra bulk. Once this is done, I'm going to bring this over to the iron and I'm going to press my seam open and nice and flat. So now that I've pressed my backing with the seams open, nice and flat, just like that, I went ahead and opened up the backing because I want to show you how much extra you'll have from the four yards if you're making the throw size. So here I've laid my quilt top on top of my back fabric. And uh, of course you want to leave a couple of inches around the perimeter of your quilt while you're quilting and we'll trim that up at the very end before we do our binding. But over here on the right side of our quilt we have quite a bit of extra fabric. So if you want to go ahead and trim that away at this point, you can do that and just go ahead and add that to your fabric stash for later. Just make sure to leave a couple inches on the right side as well. Let me pause this because I want to show you the length of the backing fabric as well. 
So down on this side, you'll see you have quite a big of uh, quite a big chunk of fabric that you'll have extra on the length as well. So all of that fabric is not going to waste. We will save it for future projects. But the four yards gives us enough to give us some uh, overage on all four sides of our quilt and uh, provides a good backing with extra. <laughs> so go ahead and baste your quilt however you like. I'm going to go ahead and trim my bat batting as well so I don't have an extra bulky batting just flopping around while I'm doing the quilting. I'm going to get this loaded on the long arm and then bring you along as I quilt this quilt. I have everything loaded onto the long arm frame and I just thought it would be really fun to bring you along and show you the quilting that I plan to do on my quilt. For this quilt I'm going to be doing uh, some stitch in the ditch work and I'm using a ruler so that I can stay nice and straight. Now some of my seams are quite thick and so I do have to nudge over just a little bit here and there. but I love the look of the stitch in the ditch with this quilt. I do think with the thicker seams, I might have had a little bit of an easier time if I did an all over meandering on this quilt to stay away from the thicker seams, but we're gonna power through it and do the stitch in the ditch around my sashings, and then we'll move over and I'll show you how I stitch in the ditch around all of my blocks as well. Now I've heard from some of you who plan on tying your quilts and I think this quilt lends perfect for that and I cannot wait to see your pictures. I also have some hand quilters out there and uh, I cannot wait to see what you do with these quilts. So now we're going to work on the block portion and get that all quilted. Maybe it's just me, but I love watching videos of people doing quilting and just, I, I thought I would just bring you along and spend some time and share this part of the process with you. I think it's a lot of fun to watch. I could probably sit for an entire weekend <laughs> and watch people as they're quilting, not only with their long arm, but I've been watching some hand quilting videos because I plan, or my plans are, to learn how to do hand quilting and have projects where I can sit in the evenings and hand quilt. Now I know many of you are using your domestic machines to quilt your quilt and uh, I love watching those videos too especially the videos of uh, sitting down and doing free motion work on the domestic machine. Now you can see <laughs> I forgot some of my seams and so I've had to backtrack and go get those. And quilting this way, uh, you do a lot of traveling going back over seams that you've already quilted to move from one place to another. And as we finish up this row, I'm going to move over and show you how I plan to quilt my daisies. Now, by no means am I uh, endorsed or sponsored by Nolting, but I will say I love my Nolting machine. And uh, there's really not enough good things I can say about it. I know we're all partial to our own machines. But my Nolting, I make a lot of quilts with denim. And this Nolting does not mind stitching through some thick denim seams. <laughs> or t-shirt quilts as well. I make a lot of those. So there we are. I'm going to do this exact same process all the way through my quilt. I 
After my quilt is done, I'm going to go ahead and make my binding. So I have my piece of half of a yard of fabric and I'm going to fold that in half, matching up the folded edge up at the top. And this is just going to help me cut my six strips of binding much faster. <laughs> so the fabric is doubled. I'm going to cut my strips at two and a half inches. I'll make three cuts and that'll give me my six pieces of binding and I have a little bit left over. Once I have my six strips, I'm going to remove the salvage edge and I'm ready to piece together my strips and get those ready and folded and pressed to make my binding. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare my binding and we're going to start binding this quilt. So ta-da, just like magic, I have all my binding. This is how I do the majority of my quilt binding. I fold in the raw edge. That gives me a nice clean edge to my binding. Today I'm going to attach my binding to the back side of my quilt first. So I'm going to pin that in place so it doesn't move around as I attach the binding. I do have videos that go more into attaching binding and I even have a few videos on how to make your binding. So if this is the first quilt you've ever made and you have questions about the binding, go check out my channel because uh, I do have several binding videos that you can watch that go into more detail. Today I'm just really bringing you along and spending time with you throughout the process of finishing up this quilt. We've come to our first corner and we're going to attach the binding to the entire quilt back. And we're going to meet up as we come to the end of the binding. So we're back to the very beginning. I'm going to trim away the extra part of the binding. So there's our opening. I'm going to bring it over and give myself a little bit of leeway so that I can tuck that tail of binding into the opening. And this is how I finish maybe 95% of my quilt backs or my bindings because it's super quick and easy. You would not want to do it this way if you are showing your quilt in a quilt show. <laughs> Once I have that tucked in, I'm just going to finish that seam and do some back stitches to lock it in place. And then we're going to flip the quilt over and finish up our binding. Now we're at the front of the quilt and we can simply pull the binding from the back, flip it over our quilt edge, and start sewing it down. Now I also have videos on how to glue baste your binding and so that is really helpful and uh, again Scroll through my videos, you'll find those uh, videos and uh, certainly glue basting your binding gives you a perfect binding every single time. <laughs> the way you see me doing the binding today is just a super quick way to get it finished and yet it still looks very nice and professional and uh, 
lends to a very pretty binding. It's just a little bit faster. <laughs> Turning the first corner, I'm going to repeat this process all the way around my quilt until we get to where we started. We're coming back to where we started, right there. And I'm just going to sew a little bit beyond where we started and make sure to finish by doing some back stitching to lock everything in place. Now we can take a look at our binding. Everything is nice and pretty. I have my mitered corners. And I think that that is perfect. <laughs> so now we're going to go ahead and move over. The very last thing we have to do is to hand sew our quilt label onto the back. Today I'm going to be using some Fabri-Tac glue. I absolutely love this glue. Uh, it's permanent even through the wash. I'm going to add a little bit around the opening where we turned our label and then some around the perimeter of my label being careful i don't like to go all the way to the edge and i'm going to show you why here in just a second i'm going to place my label down and finger press it nice and flat and this glue dries really really quick and so we're going to wait just a few minutes and then we can start hand sewing our label to finish this up. Now once the glue is dry we can bring in our quilting needle, it's just a regular needle, <laughs> and some thread that matches our label. I'm going to use a single strand of thread and get my needle threaded. And then I'm going to tie a knot at the end of my thread. And the way I like to tie my knots is I like to find the end of my thread and hold it down with the needle and then wrap my thread. Oh, I like to go like eight or nine times <laughs> around the needle and then hold it with my finger and pinch that thread and slide it off the needle all the way down to the end of the thread and that is going to easily give me a knot just like you see here so now we can start hand stitching this label and here's the reason why i like to keep the glue away from the edge i like to fold my label over and go in from the back of my label that'll hide my knot and then come out the very edge of my label I'm working in the middle of my quilt. I'm not sewing all the way through my quilt to the front. I'm going into the back of my quilt and then coming into the label at the very, very edge. Going into the middle of the quilt, coming back out into the edge of the label. Now you can do any kind of hand stitching that you like and I really like uh, labels that are stitched on with a blanket stitch by hand, but I'm not very good at doing a blanket stitch. <laughs> so I'm working and practicing on that. And in the time being, I stick to this kind of stitching because it is hidden <laughs> and you don't see it, but it's really effective in holding this quilt label down. We're going to work all the way around to where we started. And once we come to the beginning, I'm going to take a small little bite of the back of the quilt right into the edge of the label 
and we're going to finish this off with a knot. And so I'll pull my thread until I have a little loop. And then I'll stick my needle in three or four times and pull that thread down to form my knot and finish off my hand stitching. And once that's nice and tight, I go in through the back of my quilt and bury that thread in my quilt. We'll trim it off and our quilt is done. So here's my label, all hand stitched down. And because we didn't use any kind of uh, fusible interfacing, my label is really nice and soft like the rest of my quilt. So let's go take a look at our finished Daisy Days quilt. So here we are, this is it. It's all finished and ready to be used and loved for years and years. I absolutely love this quilt. I love all of the secondary patterns that show up. And um, I, I, I really think that even a beginner could make this quilt, especially if you walk from video number one and follow all the steps with me up until today. Now certainly we are all at different levels in our quilt making experience and journey. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I love making these videos and bringing you along because I really feel like I'm sitting there and sewing with you. And uh, if you have any questions about any of the videos, uh, please jump down to the comment section below. I would love to help you, and I would love to also follow your progress. And so if you join me on the Creative Crew group, I would love to see your pictures. And if you don't do Facebook, make sure to jump over to Etsy, go to my shop, and send me a message with your pictures and questions. I think this is a super fun quilt. I love all of the secondary patterns that pop out once you really start looking at this quilt. Uh, I, I really think maybe I should have called this kaleidoscope or something like that <laughs> because every time I look at it, I see something different and I think that's a lot of fun. Now the blue jeans in this quilt that I used uh, added a little bit of difficulty with our seams, but I worked through it and I absolutely love using denim in my quilts because it goes with every single color underneath the rainbow. And I cannot wait to see the fabrics and the materials that you used in your quilt. Let's go ahead and flip this over so that we can take a look at the back side of this quilt. Here we are as we take a final look at this quilt from the back. There's our little quilt label. <laughs> I'm over by the window so that hopefully you can see the quilting come through to the back of the quilt. I absolutely love the fabric that I found for this quilt. It was almost like it was made special for my quilt. <laughs> I will say though, I have set a New Year's resolution for next year. I'd really like to start making some scrappy backs. I'm more of a plain Jane kind of quilt back quilter <laughs> and usually all of my quilt backs are a solid piece and I'd really like to mix things up and start making some scrappy backs but don't you just love that isn't that so pretty so I'm hoping that you could see the quilting I've had so much fun with you making this quilt I really hope you share your pictures with me we would all love to see them. And that's the back of my quilt. I've had so much fun making this quilt with you. Cannot believe five weeks gone just like that. But we have something really beautiful to remember our time with one another. Now I'm off to start creating something new. But I would always love to help you if you're just now finding the series and you have questions. Don't forget to go down to the comments section and I will be glad to help you along your way in making this quilt. Don't forget to subscribe if this is the first time you're catching any of my videos. I would love for you to join my quilting journey. I really feel like it's our quilting journey because we develop the friendship and I feel more like we have extended family out there 
quilting and helping each other along our way. Also, don't forget to join the Creative Crew group. We would love to have you. It's a whole community of friends and family. Really, more it's more like family. And we share all kinds of projects, not just quilting, but our crochet and knitting and painting and pottery, gardening, all kinds of stuff. And so if you have stuff you'd like to share or you have questions, it's really easy over there. Again, all the links will be in the description box below. Cannot wait to start a new project with you, and we will see you really soon. Thank you so much for joining along. Bye, everybody.